to camp and like summer camp and my counselor was like oh are you adopted me and i was like no and she's like really because wow. like, she has like a different skin color like it's a little bit darker so people are like which one of you is adopted like even though i guess i kind of look like it i'm not completely hispanic so i don't see the point in putting it down well i mean i just i just think it's like part of our culture and like i i don't see why you would not want to be proud of it I mean, yeah, me all her life has known one reality of what, you know, our family makeup is. And there's been like this mysterious kind of hidden part. I mean, it's very obvious when you meet Abuelita. I mean, she's not like, she's not like your other grandma at all. No. And so there's this whole aspect of discovering and kind of connecting back with that and finding out what that is. My mother is from El Salvador, and my father is from uh, Granger, Washington. And I was born in the city of Toppenish, which is actually an Indian reservation in uh, Washington state. My mom and dad divorced uh, early. I was five. Um, so just the way that that all panned out, uh, I was raised with my dad. The carpenter side of the family is very family oriented. Um, but my sister and I would stick out because we were the only ones in this Anglo family that had a uh, melanin in us, so we were brown. And uh, I even remember um, stories about when I was born and the nurses, um, they thought I was a cute little baby, but they called me Charlie Brown because I was uh, different in that regard from the other carpenters. In El Salvador, common street food is the pupusas with curtido. And that is just something that my dad always, we had. The smell and the food and the people was very comforting and familiar. And so it was kind of cool that I always had that kind of touchstone with my culture. It was the one thing I had that I felt like I could connect with. What breaks the spell is the minute that people naturally, they see me and they start engaging with me in Spanish and I can't talk back. And it's a very frustrating thing and it's frustrating for two reasons. One, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in myself that I can't talk back. Um, so I feel like I'm letting myself down a little bit. Um, and then the other thing is the look on the faces of the people engaging me. They're like, why don't you know Spanish? You look like you should know this. 